Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. I'm Nick McDowell. Today we're continuing the Allied Grand Campaign in Close Combat at Bridge Too Far, a game based on the Battle of Arnhem, Operation Market Garden. In this series, we use the missions in the Allied Grand Campaign to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. Each episode, we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyse possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. In this episode, we're in the Arnhem Sector, the Arnhem Relief Area of Operations. Our objective is the Relief West Approach. It is Day 4 of Operation Market Garden, 0600 hours on 20 September 1944. Relief West Approach. You fought hard to secure this area in the Arnhem Bridge operation, but now the Germans threatened to take it back. Do everything you can to keep this avenue clear of enemy troops. This may be an impossible task, because enemy troop strength will continue to increase while yours decreases. Your reinforcements should arrive on day 3. The road must remain in British hands, so that Lieutenant Colonel Frost's men remain supplied and in contact with the rest of 1st Airborne. If you let the Germans take this area, your men will be cut off at the Arnhem Bridge. Let's examine our forces. Once again, I have a small number of reinforcements trickling in from the Osterbeck landing zone. Airborne Bren teams are the core of the British Army. They use a light machine gun, bolt-action rifles and hand grenades. Use them on the front lines, but they should run or hide from tanks. Airborne rifle teams use bolt-action rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a submachine gun. Use rifle teams on the front lines and to hold victory locations. They are useless against tanks. Airborne Piat teams consist of an anti-tank bomb projector, a bolt-action rifle and hand grenades. Not as effective as the Panzer Shrek, the Piat's effective range is 8 to 80 metres. Airborne ad hoc rifle teams are low quality replacement teams. They use single shot rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a submachine gun. Use them to free up quality teams for other duties. Airborne six pounder light anti tank gun teams also contain rifles and grenades. Best used as an anti tank weapon, this gun is also effective against infantry targets. Its high rate of fire makes up for its low armour penetration. Airborne 3 inch medium mortar teams also contain bolt action rifles and hand grenades. Because mortars can shoot over obstacles, position these teams behind buildings or trees. Use them to suppress enemy infantry and lay smoke screens. Airborne Vickers medium machine gun teams also include bolt action rifles and hand grenades. Position these teams in multi story buildings or locations with long lines of sight so they can suppress enemy infantry. Next, let's look at the map and do some mission analysis. I will develop a plan and then execute it in the game. Our mission is to defend the Relief West approach in order to enable supply and reinforcement to our troops at Arnhem Bridge. We have an infantry company from the British 1st Airborne Division, consisting of two rifle sections, three Bren sections and three Piat teams, with two Vickers medium machine gun detachments, a six pounder anti-tank gun and two three inch mortars in support. North is towards the bottom of the map. Once again, my focus is on the eastern or left side of the map from where the Germans will attack. I have marked five areas of interest. Number one, the two story stone building marked the orphanage, which overlooks movement along the riverfront and the streets. Number two, the crossroads around Remond's Plain, as the buildings here have long lines of sight down all of the key roads and effectively control movement from east to west. In previous battles, this area has proven to be decisive terrain, and I expect it will be again. Number three, the area around the rail station and rail depot, with the road to Osterbeck to the south. This is likely to be the Germans' final objective. The single-storey stone rail depot building offers excellent cover and concealment, and has a long line of sight up the road into the Remond's Plain crossroads. Number four, a number of single-storey warehouses that do not provide any obvious offensive or defensive advantage and are overlooked by three-storey buildings in adjacent blocks. The two-storey stone Hotel Kaiserskron building in the centre is a possible firing position for machine guns. And number five, the rows of three-storey houses north of the Rhine, such as Van Sant's house, that control the road to Arnhem Bridge with good observation and lines of fire down the streets. These streets afford the most likely avenue of approach. I assess the enemy will again attempt to clear the British from this area in order to isolate the airborne forces at Arnhem from reinforcement and resupply. Based on previous battles, the enemy's most likely course of action is to use one or more tanks to support an infantry assault on a wide front. 
One platoon would attack through the Van Sant's house area. Another platoon would attack through the Hotel Kaiserskron area. The tanks could hang back and provide suppression at a distance. Or they could rely on speed and shock action to break into the defensive system, firing at close range to destroy the cohesion of the defenders, allowing their supporting infantry to overrun the position in a frontal or flanking attack. This could force me to either withdraw from the area or face destruction. The enemy's most dangerous course of action is to concentrate all their forces on a single point in my defensive structure. This German tactic is called the Schwerpunkt, literally heavy point. With this approach, they would put the heavy weight of their entire combat power against one point of my defensive position. The Germans could bring an entire company-sized battle group of tanks and infantry to bear on one or two sections at a time. Then one by one, they would roll up my entire position. This would destroy my forces in the area and cut off Frost's men at the bridge. I will continue to develop the defensive plan from the previous battle in this area on Day 3, Episode 26, but with some additional troops to bolster and thicken up my defences against a Schwerpunkt-style attack. I assess the greatest threat is if enemy armour gets in close to overrun my forces in the main defensive system. So, I will establish an anti-tank engagement area in the centre of this system. The company will stay concealed to lure any tanks into this ambush location. Then, I will spring the ambush with a 6-pounder anti-tank artillery, supported by the three Piat teams. I have also assigned secondary tasks if the tanks attack from an unexpected direction, or do not enter the engagement area. For security, the 6-pounder is covered by Lieutenant Hoffman's rifle section to the south, and the Piat teams are covered by the troops in the main defensive system. As in yesterday's battle, I have deployed the anti-tank gun in the single-storey stone rail depot building for better cover and concealment, including against mortar indirect fire. This diagram illustrates the interlocking fields of fire between the infantry sections in the defensive position. It looks a bit like a porcupine, with spines sticking out. One look at this, and you can see why a frontal assault by infantry is bound to fail. The rifle and Bren sections will fire down the roads and dominate the open ground on the approaches to Roman's Plain. They have interlocking fields of fire and can provide each other mutual support. The Vickers machine guns occupy depth positions, firing down the main street and covering the front of the position. Finally, the two mortars occupy a defilade position behind the railway station buildings to engage any on-call targets. The key to this defensive position is a solid anti-tank plan, supported by infantry positions layered in depth with good fields of fire. Defended localities in tank country will be built up on the plan for anti-tank defence. In making any plan involving defence, the commander must have his anti-tank plan clear in his head from the very start. I have now moved my troops into position and will execute the plan in real time. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the various courses of action and if you've identified a viable alternative. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And so we begin. Okay, two Tiger tanks. The Germans aren't kidding around. But no sign of the infantry. The British troops remain concealed for now. A granite verfer or mortar crew. And another granite verfer crew. A reserve squad. Another reserve squad. 
the Tigers are on the move. Heavy tanks and light infantry. I wonder if this means the Germans are running low on reinforcements. The Tigers seem to be leading the assault. And the mortar teams are leading the infantry assault. That is strange. A Sturmgrenadier squad appears in one of the two-storey buildings. The Tiger tank presses forward. As does the mortar squad. Overall, the German assault seems more cautious than usual. The Germans take von Sant's house. Position. The Tigers press forward. <coughs> but stop short of the engagement area. The British troops hold their nerve and remain concealed. The Germans take the Hotel Kaiserskron. Mm 
An Aufklarer or Recon Squad is occupying one of the buildings near the Hotel Kaiserskron. The tension mounts. Fighting could break out at any moment. An Aufklarer Squad pushes forward. Corporal Kramer's Bren section opens proceedings. Miller's Piat team moves up to the front line. The Alfclara squad is eliminated. Kramer's section goes to ground. The Tiger moves into position and opens fire. Suddenly the Germans are on the move. A reserve squad. A Schutzen squad. A Sturmgrenadier squad. Move completed. Miller's Piat team is in position. Kramer's Bren section takes a hit. The Piat fires at and hits the Tiger. The Tiger shrugs it off. Both mortars open fire missions. Casualties in the Bren section and Piat team. The attack develops around von Sant's house. Tedder's rifle section opens up on a Schutzen squad. Hagler's Vickers joins in. The Schutzen are cut to pieces. A reserve squad falls back. Across the road, the Sturmgrenadier squad moves between warehouse buildings. The Bren section opens up at short range, as does the ad hoc rifle section. The Scharfschutz crosses the road and is targeted. And is cut down. The Germans are moving to outflank the right flank of my defence. The Bren section in the orphanage opens fire on the granite Werfer team.
On the left flank, near Hotel Kaiserskron, the Brandon ad hoc rifle sections with mortar support are holding off a Sturmgrenadier squad and heavy machine gun, as well as the Tiger tank. On the right flank, the Vickers targets the remnants of a Sturmgrenadier squad. The Sturmgrenadier on the left flank have taken casualties. The reserve squad pulls back. The Schutzen squad is down to one last member. And the Sturmgrenadier squad only has two soldiers left. And we detect another Sturmgrenadier squad in the centre. Sergeant Ott's Bren section and the mortar target this squad. With Hagler dead, the second Vickers team is withdrawn. I order them back into position. On the left flank, the Sturmgrenadier squad breaks cover and is targeted. The ad hoc rifle section takes another casualty. And goes to ground. Both mortars are out of HE ammunition and go to ground. The Piat launches again, and hits again, but with no damage to the Tiger. So far, the Tigers are playing it safe, providing fire support to the infantry, but not entering the engagement area. More units are pushing on the right flank. A reserve squad. Heavy machine gun. 
And the Sturm Grenadier squad from the center. On the right flank, Corporal Keith's Bren section in the orphanage is throwing grenades. The remainder of the Sturmgrenadier squad is assaulting. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. A British casualty. Then the Sturmgrenadier squad is eliminated. Corporal Keith's Bren section retakes the orphanage. Firing continues from the German positions. But the British have all gone to ground. The Tiger pushes forward near Von Sant's house. It is too much for Sergeant Ott's Bren section, which panics and runs. In position. Lance Corporal Little is shot down as he runs away. The last member of an Alf Clara squad is moving in the open. Kramer on the Bren targets him. Sergeant Ott and Private Thompson are back in position.
Miller on the Piat takes another shot. Hits the area, but does not damage the Tiger. Sturmgrenadier squad in the open. They are targeted by Bren and Vickers sections. Corporal Kramer is injured and the Bren section lost. A Granatwerfer squad is eliminated near the orphanage. Pick up your weapon. We're under heavy fire. We're under heavy fire. This is a brutal fight. Miller on the Piat takes another shot. Yes, another direct hit, and at last he knocks out the Tiger. Tiger Tiger, burning bright, makes this mission quite alright. This causes confusion in the Germans opposite. The vehicle crew, a heavy machine gun, and reserve squad all scramble to get away. Lieutenant Hoffman's rifle squad joins in and targets the heavy machine gun. So far the defence has held, yet again. The British have taken casualties but have not given any ground. The Germans have lost most of their Kampfgruppe and a Tiger tank. They are down to isolated remnants of their squads. The heavy machine gun squad is eliminated. Back 
Time for a counterattack. Lieutenant Hoffman leads the rifle section over to the warehouses. Firing dies down. On the right flank, the last member of the Schützen squad falls. In position. In the center, the last member of the reserve squad falls. Hoffman's section clears the warehouse next to the knocked out tiger. They move on to the two-storey house. Nimm deine Waffe. Corporal Keith's Bren section leaves the orphanage to clear the buildings on the right flank. <laughs> Lieutenant Hoffman has cleared the two-storey building and moves towards the Hotel Kaiserskron. In position. In the centre, the Germans still have a Tiger tank and a largely intact Sturmgrenadier squad. The Tiger fires at Hoffman's section, killing Private Reeves. Another casualty, Private Seal is killed. The mortars place quick smoke to obscure the Tiger's line of sight. Keith's brain section continues to push forward. Uh, 
Area secured. Hoffman's section secures the Hotel Kaiserskron. Completed. Staff Sergeant Tedder's rifle section advances on Vance Hunt's house. <laughs> the Piat moves into position. The Vickers lays down covering fire. Move completed. But the Germans still have troops in the house. A Panzerschreck and a Granitwerfer. Tedder is hit. The section continues the assault. Pick up your weapon. Secure the area. No! Area secured. Keith's Bren section secures the road to Arnhem. The Germans are cut off. Hand to hand fighting in Van Sant's house. We're under heavy fire. Huh? Keep lost. Tedder's rifle section is lost. The Vickers targets the Granitwerfer in the open. Sergeant Ott's Bren and Webb's ad hoc rifle sections cross the street. Webb is shot.
The Panzer Shrek still holds Van Sant's house. Move completed. Move completed. The Sturmgrenadier squad is crossing the street towards the Hotel Kaiserskron. It takes casualties. The Piat team assaults towards Van Sant's house. The Sturmgrenadier squad takes the Hotel Kaiserskron. Secure the area. A firefight with Hoffman's section ensues. The Piat team is lost. But the Sturm Grenadier surrenders. Area secured. Hoffman takes back the Hotel Kaiserskron. Move completed. I am almost out of options. Completed. 
Keith's brand section assaults towards Von Sant's house under covering fire from the Vickers. The mortars fire another quick smoke mission to blind the tiger. Move completed. Thompson from Ott's brand section charges into Van Sant's house. No! But is killed. The Panzer Shrek squad just won't die. Both PR teams move forward as hunter-killer teams to target the tiger. Area secured. Keith's brand section finally takes Von Sant's house. Miller launches another Piat. It hits the area but causes no damage. Move completed. Secure the area. Bosco and the other Piat team lines up a shot. Hit! The battle ended because the Germans were routed from the map. The Allies gained control of the area, but the Germans are expected to launch a counterattack later. The German forces took excessive losses. I made Allied progress of 30 against expected progress of 0 by the end of the day. Headquarters did not hold out much hope for me then. I suffered 25 KIA. The enemy suffered 50 KIA, 6 surrendered and 2 Tiger tanks destroyed. Three Distinguished Conduct Medals were awarded. We will not see the Germans again in this area today. Let's examine casualties on both sides. First, the British, from the 1st Airborne Division. Heavy losses, mostly in the Bren and Rifle sections. Corporal Keith is awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal for capturing two objectives. Private Stone from Hoffman's section is also awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal for capturing the Hotel Kaiserskron twice and Private Miller from the Piat team for knocking out a German Tiger tank. Private Bosco also knocked out a Tiger tank, but his nomination is knocked back, perhaps because he already won the medal last time. Then the Germans from the 9th Panzer Division. Three Sturmgrenadier squads, a Schutzen squad, two Alfklara squads, two Reserve squads, a Scharfschützer, Of course, two Tiger tanks, 
a heavy machine gun, two granite vapor mortars, and a Panzer Shrek team, all wiped out or surrendered. So, what did we learn? The value of tactical patience. This worked well when I held my fire until German forces were within range of multiple weapon systems. As a result, a very heavy attack by two Tiger tanks and multiple Sturmgrenadier and machine gun and other squads was defeated with minimal casualties. However, my subsequent counterattack did not demonstrate tactical patience. By this stage, the Germans had already lost most of their troops. I was too keen to take back territory that offered me no real tactical advantage. The result was a patchy frontal assault into the remaining enemy at Van Sant's house. I suffered a lot of casualties in this assault, and to what end? To be clear, counterattack is usually a good idea, but if I'd been more patient, I could have let the Germans keep the area around Van Sant's house. This would not have compromised my defensive position. Or I could have planned the assault on Van Sant's house more carefully to overwhelm the defences and I would not have suffered as many casualties in my rifle and Bren sections. Tactical patience in the early stages won me the battle, but lack of tactical patience later on caused casualties that could hurt me in subsequent battles. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.